All right, this next pro tip is an extremely important one for anyone who works with pivot tables in Excel. I'm going to show you how we can display pivots in different types of table layouts or forms, specifically outline or tabular form. Now, most pivot tables by default will show in what's called compact form, and that groups all of your row labels together or nests them into a single column. So from your pivot table tool tab, the design group specifically, you'll see a report layout dropdown showing your different table layouts or form options. And this is what compact form typically looks like by default. We've got one value column here, the average of price, and we have two row labels, a country and a province field. Now the problem is that in compact form, these two fields get kind of nested together and both live within column A. And that means we have one column header accessible for things like sorting and filtering, and we can't apply our own sorting or filtering rules to each of those two fields individually. So that seriously limits our ability to slice and dice and explore these different row labels. And for that exact reason, I recommend that you often use the second option here, outline form. And outline form looks very, very similar to compact form. The only difference is that it takes those row labels and it breaks them out into their own columns, which means that now we have access to additional column headers and column labels including those sorting and filtering tools. So outline form is a fantastic format to use anytime you really need to explore or analyze your raw data. And then you also have tabular form. And in this case, I'm looking at the tabular layout with repeating item labels. And tabular form essentially formats your pivot kind of like a table, it gets rid of those extra spacing rows and formatting rows, things like that. And with a little bit of clever formatting, and a few options like repeating the item labels, hiding the subtotals, choosing not to display grand totals, we can end up with something that looks like this, which essentially looks just like a nice clean source data table that we can use for further analysis. Now, one thing to note, you can change your pivot table behavior and adjust your default from compact form to something like outline or tabular. I'll show you just what that looks like in a second. But again, to recap those common use cases, Outline form, great way to explore your data, sort and filter multiple fields individually. And tabular form with repeating labels and no grand totals or subtotals can be the perfect approach to create new source data that you can package up, copy, paste, and use for other analytical purposes. So with that, let's jump into Excel. I'm gonna show you what each of these table forms or layouts looks like, and then how we can use our options menu to change the default behavior. All right, so go ahead and open up your pro tip workbook and we're going to drill into the outline and tabular layout demo in our gray pivot table tip section. So go ahead and link out to that sheet. And what we're looking at here is a simple pivot table built on top of our wine tasting data. Now, if you've been following through the course, this should look pretty familiar. We've got our countries, provinces, our wines, our tasters, and some values like points and price. Now, what you'll notice is that I've pulled in two fields into the row labels here, country and province. But because we're in the default compact layout, both of those fields have been nested together in column A. And because I only have this one dropdown, it makes it very, very difficult to apply different sorting or filtering rules to each field individually. Like for instance, if I wanted to show only the top five countries, but also sort my provinces by a certain metric, those types of combinations or individual filter or sorting settings really don't work very well in this compact layout. So all I'm going to do is head to pivot table tools, design tab, go into report layout and switch it to show in outline form. All that's going to do, everything else is going to stay the same except those two fields that had been nested in column A are now broken out into a country column and a province column. And more importantly, now I have labels assigned to each of those columns, which will make it much, much easier to apply those different combinations of filtering and sorting rules. So generally speaking, I use outline form almost exclusively. I very rarely use compact form for that exact reason. Now let's take a minute and talk about tabular format. So we've got data behind the scenes. Our source data is pretty granular. It goes all the way down to the individual wine level. 
And let's say we wanted to roll that data up or aggregate it at a higher level of granularity. Like maybe we only want these four fields, for instance. We only care about data at the province level. In cases like that, a pivot table, just like we're doing here, can do an excellent job aggregating those numbers up. So we're looking at the overall point rating and overall average price by province and by country. Problem is if I copied and grabbed the data out of this pivot, I would still have a lot of manual work to do to put it into a nice clean tabular format for analysis. I've got these kind of header and subtotal rows here. I've got blank rows that I'd have to fill in. And this is where tabular form really comes into play. So here in our design tab, let's switch from outline to tabular form. And what we'll do is go back into that menu and choose repeat all item labels that fills in those blanks. And we're getting closer to what we need here. The only problem is we still have these extra total rows, which really isn't a good thing when it comes to producing a raw tabular data set for analysis. So all we need to do subtotals and say we don't want to show subtotals and grand totals we don't want grand totals so off for rows and columns and there you go as you scroll through this looks like a nice clean unformatted tabular data set so what i would do here is then take this copy the data in the pivot control shift down to grab the whole list copy it paste it as values somewhere else and then you're off and running you can analyze this data however you see fit so again, a great way to kind of convert a very granular data set uh, into different formats or different levels of granularity uh, for different analyses or different purposes. Now, last thing I want to show you very quickly here, if you want to change the default behavior and tell your pivots never to default to that compact form, you can actually do that in your main Excel file options. So options, you're going to go into your data tab here. And see right here at the top, it says make changes to the default layout of pivot tables. Go ahead and click that edit button. And here's where you can say, all right, here's how I want to treat subtotals, grand totals, and the report layout. This is the key here. Note how it says show in compact form. That's likely what your version of Excel is showing as well. What you can do is switch it over to another option here. I'd highly recommend the outline form. So there you go. You can change your layout, change your default behavior and create the layout or table style that best suits your needs.